All right, here we go. So hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to the group sessions. We've done a full cycle of workshops and Kyla, who's also present, say hi Kyla. Hi guys. Hello everyone. <laughs> Um, has joined us on every single topic that we've covered so far. Now, my colleague Govinda is obviously producing more topics all the time, and we're always looking for you, the students and learners, to tell us what kind of topics you'd like us to go over in more detail. And so, of course, then we can have more group sessions that we run onwards and onwards and onwards and onwards. But we've done a full loop, so we are back at the introduction. And what better way to do an introduction than actually with a student? Because the first time I did an introduction, you weren't here, Kyla. You don't actually know what this session is, do you? No. No. OK, then. So first of all, let's introduce uh, myself. So I'm Daniel Holly. I'm one of the catch up coordinators at uh, City of Bristol College. My job is to effectively support, encourage, cheerlead and positively reinforce all of the learners who unfortunately had a difficult time because of lockdown and COVID-19 last year. Now, that is obviously quite an undertaking, but it's one that I'm not shying away from and one that I'm actually really, really happy to do because it means that my job is being a positive role model, positive support, again, a cheerleader, which I absolutely love doing to all the learners out there. And one of the ways that I'm doing this is through group sessions online via Teams. So if you're watching this perhaps on YouTube, uh, I'm actually recording this via Teams, a Teams call. Um, and if you're a student at City of Bristol College, or indeed if you're a member of staff and you want your students to be part of these sessions, then of course you can drop us an email at thegdshowbristol at gmail.com or thegdshow at cityofbristol.ac.uk and we can get those uh, sessions arranged and we can have them into this classroom. So I run these sessions every Monday, Wednesday and Thursday. Today's a Wednesday and they run at 4 p.m. And we go over a variety of different topics, such as financial management, stress management, time management. No, wait, do we do a time management one? No. Have we, no. Done, a, have we done a time management one, Kyla? No. We have. <gasps> Gasp. Well, that's one we're going to have to put together then. Time management, for sure. I know we want to have one about intellectual wellness. We cover the wellness wheel. Uh, we cover so many relationships and communication, so many different topics we cover in depth. Uh, and so far, the feedback has been very positive, or at least... Let's let's hear Kyla say it. Actually, honestly, Kyla, be honest now, right? Have you had a good time with these sessions? Yes, it's helped me so much. It has. Good. Okay, then. Good. Fine. That was an honest answer, right? I didn't give you any money to say that. No. Nope. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, they, they have had a positive response so far. So, again, if you're interested, of course, you can email us at thegdshowbristol at gmail.com or at thegdshow at cityofbristol.ac.uk and we can get your students onto these sessions. We'll give them the link to the classroom and then they can just join and have a good time with us all here. So, so that is one of the things we do. Now quickly, again, before we get start, the other things that Govinda and I do are also run one-to-one -one sessions. So we have, of course, one-to-one -one coaching conversations with the students, wherein we very much either work in a life coaching capacity or a performance coach capacity, depending on what the needs are. If a person is looking to accelerate their progress, then of course it'll be more performance coaching based. But if a person is looking to find guidance or clarity on their progress, or is simply wanting to get some motivation, then we're looking at more life coaching and we'll go through that process in the one-to-one -one conversations. Uh, the other thing that we do is we have our podcast show, which is of course the GD show, which you can find on Spotify, you can find on Apple Podcasts as well. You can find us on Podbean. The thing I think you should do is Google us. Put down Dana Govinda, the GD show, which should come up for you. And we've got about five episodes going at the moment, um, but do join us because on there we're talking about things like addiction. We talk about confidence and motivation. Well, our next episode coming up is about uh, mental stress and lockdown. But we've also interviewed people like Andy Forbes, the CEO of City of Bristol College, our safeguarding lead as well, Johnny Elphinstone. And we're going to be interviewing many other lecturers moving forward who are there to share with us their knowledge about their work, some of the things that they've overcome growing up. So we're really, really coming together to offer as much support in as many different ways as possible. So that is a little introduction to me and a little bit about Govinda as well. But we're here to do an introduction session. And Kyla's here as part of this session because she hasn't done it before. But that's actually really helpful that you're here, Kyla, because you're going to play along, all right? Yeah. For those of you who are watching this right now, if you want, get a pen and pad out, right? Because we're going to play a little game. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can just play along as you want, all right? But because Kyla's in the room, Kyla's answers and the speed at which Kyla answers is going to dictate the flow of this game. So maybe when I've asked a question, 
hit the space bar and pause as quickly as possible. All right? Yeah. So here we go. The game is called Witch Chocolate. Now, some of you may be familiar with this game. If not, then fantastic. If you are, obviously you can continue playing along uh, as you wish. Maybe there's some new questions in here you don't know or new puzzles. But if you don't, play along by all means. Now, here's the trick. Every single one of these answers is basically a brand of chocolate. They're all brands of chocolate, but they're not called that. They're all going to be given a cryptic hint as to what their chocolate bar or brand is. OK, now I'm going to give you a hint. None of these will be like Nestle or Cadbury's or anything like that. It'll be the name of the chocolate bar or brand underneath Nestle or Cadbury's and things like that. Yeah. All right. So if you think you're walking down the aisle of the sweet uh, sweet store, if you like, uh, the sweet aisle of the store, and you're looking at these chocolate bars there, that's that's what we're talking about, all right? We're going to start with this one and see how well you get on, Kyla. So, Posh Road, which chocolate brand or bar would might that be, do you reckon? Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> That's all right. What's another word for road? Street. Uh-huh. Quality street. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So we get the idea of the game now, yeah? Yeah. Okay, this is this is how it goes from here on, all right? Now, some of these are a little cryptic. Some of these are a little bit like, what is that? But that's okay. We'll play with the hints. It's absolutely fine. In fact, I'll tell you what, Kyla, if you want a hint, ask for a hint, okay? okay. All right, cool. You at home, play along. Right, here we go. What's the next one? Quiet. Um, oh, I know this one as well. Mm -hmm. oh. It's okay, you got this. <laughs> Can I get a hint? I believe in you. I'm doing it right now. Whisper. Very good. Amazing. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Superb. Next one. After eight. Very good. That was quick fire, guys. If you guys are home didn't get a chance to pause it, well, <laughs> what did I say? Every time, pause it. All right, because that was quick. Shooting from the hip there, Kyla. Nicely done. The next one. Pack feline. Now, uh, very quickly, you know what a feline is, Kyla? A cat. Good stuff. Um... Oh, God. Uh, no, I need a hint. OK, usually when you have a pack, it's stuff you take with you maybe when you go camping or hiking, right? Um, and, yeah, it's, it contains all the stuff that you would need to perform any kind of task, right? And that's what you'd call it. No. <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. Kit Kat. <laughs> yeah, right? Kit Kat. Of course. You need your kit. It's a pack. Fantastic. Next one. Mars. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Shoot from the hip again. Nicely done. Kyla, Mars. Next one. Um, first, I thought it's a snowball, but it's not. Okay. Uh... Is it Yorkie? No. Then I don't know. <laughs> That's all right. These usually go in a 99. Oh, flake. Very good. Indeed, it's a flake. A flake. Good stuff. Next one. You've actually already said the answer to Yorkie. this one. Very good. Yeah, Yorkie. Well played. Well played. Next one. A big cat in prison. Um, never heard of this one, I don't think. You absolutely have. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. You know this one. Oh, God. I, don't even, I don't even know if you like chocolate or not, Kyla, but I know you know this one. I know you do. You know, you do. This is one of the one of the more famous chocolate bars on the shelf. Uh, no. <laughs> That's all right. What is a big cat? Name some big cats. Uh, lion. Mm hmm. Tigers. Mm hmm. I don't know. 
Have you not heard of a lion bar before? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> that. I'm allergic to nuts. Oh, no. Oh, that's a shame. So you never, you don't know what a lion bar tastes like? <laughs> no. Oh, they're not that great. Don't, don't forget about it. They're not that good. Okay. <laughs> You're not missing out. Okay, so, <laughs> so this chocolate bar comes before plain. What? Yeah, it comes before plain. Plain chocolate? No, no. Because before plain. What's the long word for plain? Dark chocolate. No. <laughs> no. What's the long word for plain? Right, because they, they are a plane. We say, oh, look, there's a plane. But oh, actually, aero. Very good. Yes, indeed. Aero. Nicely done. Aeroplane. Superb. Uh, next one, Big Red Bus. <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> you get them, though. It's fine. Big Red Bus. Oh, nope. What are usually, because usually there's different sizes of buses, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's the little ones and then there's the big ones. What do we usually call the big ones? Large. Uh, we, I mean, we do call them large, yeah. <laughs> but they have, because oh, they double have. Double deckers. Double deckers. Exactly. Yes. Double decker bus. Good stuff. This one, this one stumps everyone. This one gets everyone every time. It's not, it's not one of the more. Fredo. The, no, it's not Fredo. Oh. Because this is 10 cents, not 10 pence. <laughs> it's different. It's a whole different country. A whole different country. So let's even get this, Kyla, right? So so a 10 cents um, has a name, right? But so does 5 cents. 5 cents is a nickel, right? And then 25 cents is a quarter. So 10 cents, it has a name. Is it a dime? Very good. It is indeed. You're... Do you know what? I'm pretty sure you're one of the very few people who've actually got that without me having to tell them. Fair play. Well done. Good. Good. Last one. Smarties. No, it's not Smarties. Oh. Everyone does that. Everyone thinks it rhymes. It's not Smarties. Um. Parties. Uh. It was. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> can never hint these. Sure, it's it's a box. It's not a it's not a chocolate bar. It's a box. Is it Lindor's? Nope. Oh, um, then I don't know. Okay, it's a red box. Red box. Uh. When you're having a party, what are you usually doing? Having food. Mm -hmm. Why are you having a party? Because it's someone's birthday. Not always, but yeah, sure, we could do. Or, and what, what do you do with someone's birthday, generally? So, uh, celebrations. There we go. There it is, celebrations. Amazing. We did it. Fantastic. Ooh. Good. Okay. So then. On top of talking about the group sessions and what we do there, what we also want to do is introduce people to the option of one-to-one -one situation, one-to-one -one coaching and so on and so on. So what we're going to do now is just go through what those conversations will look like. And if you're watching this again, what you could do, actually, if you wanted, even if you're not from the college, you can take this away with you. So Govinda and I, again, our background is coaching. And what we designed was a very, very straightforward, well-known process um, well, so we didn't design it, <laughs> but we, we put together this process that basically is the process that we would go through in a one-to-one -one coaching situation. Now, this is the bare bones, right? This is what we'd start with. And we could follow this uh, every single conversation. But of course, life doesn't quite work out like that. So then we really apply our coaching skills to those conversations afterwards. But this is how they would all begin. So the first thing that we would ask you, and again, if you want to write this down and do this by yourself, that's absolutely fine. And of course, once you come to a kind of a, a wall and you feel like you've hit a bit of a boundary or an obstacle, then you can contact us. That's absolutely fine. So what five things would you like to have achieved by the end of the year? Now, what we're doing is we're saying by the end of the academic year. 
Right, so about July, that's what we're usually saying. What five things would you like to have achieved by the end of this academic year? If you want to go for the end of 2021, by all means, go for it. Go for it. And of course, you know, you can set your target for that time. Now, really push for these five things. All right. Um, so, so many times I've sat down in front of people and they've got, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But after enough time, sometimes they come up with three, four, five, sometimes seven. So give yourself time to really come up with some things that you would like to have achieved. Because it's very easy for us to go, oh, I, you know, I don't know. Meh. And we just leave it there. So really think of those five things. If you've got to a place where you're genuinely, genuinely drawing a blank and you've got maybe three things, fine. OK, three things. Now identify which one of those things would have the most impact, the most positive impact on you. Just highlight one of them, which is going to be have the most positive impact on you. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to take that, that target and you're going to say, right, I'm not just trying to achieve this target. I'm trying to smash this target out the park. I'm, I'm going to set a 10 out of 10 mark on this. What does that look like? So, for example, I had a learner who said to me, I want to pass my GCSEs and pass my A-levels and also then go on to university to study music uh, at university. And I said, OK, cool. What does 10 out of 10 look like to you? And I said, well, what, what do you mean? What does 10 out of 10 look like? And I said, well, let's let's say, you know, when you get marked on something, usually a six or a seven is a pass mark. So what you're saying is you're going to go for a six or a seven right out of 10 for this. I'm asking, what does 10 out of 10 look for this? What is what is just smashing it with flying colors look like to you? And they went on to describe the almost perfect scenario, the ideal scenario they would like to play out uh, for themselves with regards to that goal. They said, OK, fine. Now, with regards to that 10 out of 10, and this is where you go to the next step, right? Once you've once you've identified what 10 out of 10 blowing it out of the water looks like, you then say, right, from that mark, how would you rate yourself out of 10 based on where you are right now compared to that 10 out of 10? Where are you right now? Now, this mark can sometimes be quite low. Sometimes it's like a two or a three, right? It can be a little bit higher. It's completely up to you. But that mark has got to be very, very honest because that is where you're saying you are at in conjunction with that 10 out of 10. Because from there, what I'm going to ask you, what Govinda would ask you, what you can ask yourself is, what could you do? What what things could you do to move that mark you've given yourself up by one? Just one. And you start listing some ideas. And if you're doing this by yourself, maybe take a Google, go to Google and say, you know, what kind of activities uh, can I do to improve my da 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 or work towards yada, 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 right? And come up with some ideas that way. But ultimately what you're looking for is some ideas that you have in your head or some ideas you can find that would help you just go up one mark. You're not trying to jump to 10, just one mark, one step at a time. Now, the reason we do that is because for one, it's sustainable. Trying to go from zero to 100, you can't sustain that because what you're looking at is a total change of your lifestyle that can be really, really difficult to keep up. It's like saying, I've, you know, I've been sat on the couch for a whole year doing absolutely nothing, but as soon as lockdown's over, I'm gonna go to the gym five times a week and I'm gonna run 10 miles a day. You won't be able to keep it up. It's really, really, really hard because you've gone from one lifestyle to a completely different one overnight. It's very, very hard to keep that up. Instead, if you make small changes over a period of time, what you're doing is you're psychologically getting yourself into a new norm of new behaviors and new habits. It makes it so much easier. Also, it breaks it down one activity at a time. So you're not constantly trying to do loads of different things at once. So you're only moving up one mark at a time. Once you've got that list down and you've kind of identified it, you're going to ask yourself, right, which one of these activities will have the most impact? Which one of these things is going to be the best one to do? Now, what, when we say this, what's important to identify is not that we're saying which one of these things um, is actually going to have the most impact. It's more a case of which one of these things is most likely to have the most impact, as in which one of these activities that you've identified is going to be easiest for you to achieve in order to get feedback and impact, right? Because you could say, well, this activity is going to have the most impact, but actually that's the hardest one. That's the one that's least likely going to be done. So then don't do that one. Don't do that one. Because if you're saying it's the least likely to be done, you're taking a gamble then on your own targets, on your own goals. You don't want to do that. This isn't about gambling. This is about making decisions that are more likely, most likely going to get your goal achieved. That's what we're here for. 
So which one of these activities will have the most impact? Which one is most likely going to be undertaken by you that's going to have that change? Then you identify that activity and you go at it. Now, once we've identified this activity, that's effectively the end of the conversation. The Govinda and I can say, right, cool. That's what you're going to do now. And of course, we'll say, we do not focus on anything else but that activity. That's it. That's all you, that's all. Don't tell us that you, you know, you tried to do this other thing and it didn't work out. We're not going to be interested in that because that's not what we said we were going to read for you to do. The activity that you said was going to have the most impact is one that you want to focus on. That's where you want to put that energy in. All right. So then we'll go, right, how long do you need for that activity to play out before you want us to come back and have a conversation about it? And of course, that can be a week. It could be two weeks, three weeks. Some people said a month. Some people said, don't know. Let me let me get back to you on that. Right. And they'll say, let me work on this. Now, of course, the let me work on this thing, we rarely, rarely accept. We need targets. We need goals. We need deadlines. But there are certain circumstances where let me work on this obviously is required and we'll, we'll allow that. But I'll tell you now, be prepared for us to not accept a let me work on this with some targets because we'll be able to say, actually, that probably won't need any more than a month before you get into the groove of that, right? So by all means, be make sure you're setting yourself a, a clear deadline as best you can at all times with us and certainly with yourself, certainly with yourself. So that's the process and that's what that's what it will look like. Like I said, with these group sessions, we're going to be we're going to be running things like, again, communication, relationships, uh, purpose pathways, how to understand your purpose, you know, how to get a bit of better understanding of who you are. We've got a new workshop on self-confidence. We've got a workshop again on uh, understanding boundaries and so on and so on. So we've got a lot of workshops that we're going to start running from this point on. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, though, of course, you can email us at any of these different places. So myself, Daniel.holly at cityofbristol.ac.uk, or of course, Kavinda Rajpal at cityofbristol.ac.uk, or you can contact us at our podcast if you've got any questions for us there that you want us to answer on the show. Just go to the GD Show Bristol at gmail.com, send us an email, let us know what your question is or your comment is. Of course, we keep them all anonymous so we don't say your name out loud or anything like that unless you want us to. And that is that. That is the introduction for this session. We are going to be going live again tomorrow with our first session, The Wellness Wheel. We look forward to seeing you there. Otherwise, have a wonderful evening. Take care of yourselves and uh, I'll catch you in one of our classrooms. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.